Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to my painting channel and in this video I have a really really special and different kind of painting for you. So in this one we're going to be painting Castle Grayskull which is this fantastic dice tower that we have here. This is a really cool commission that I have for a friend who's dropped this up to me and asked me to build it and paint it and get it all tabletop ready so that he can play his games. And it's going to be a fantastic, fantastic painting as well. We're going to have real good fun with this one. So we're going to start with a dark green grey from AK Interactive. And that's all I'm going to do is just cover over the whole of the model using this colour. And I'm just going to water this down slightly so that this moves into all of those cracks and recesses as nice and easily as possible. And as normal, I've sped this up slightly so that it means that we can get through this in a nice easy fashion without spending half of our lives just watching me paint one layer of paint. So this uh, dark green grey from AK Interactive has this really really nice sort of um, dark green sort of tone and this is going to set a really great tone for us to build up from. So we're going to build this up into these really nice sort of greeny tones and green colours but we're going to do this across the rocks um, and the stonework of the castle itself and then we're going to use a few other different techniques through some of the other parts as well. So we're going to do a little bit of a mixture of different things. So this is a really great sort of dice tower as I said. So we're going to try to get this up looking as cool as possible. So that when this is on the table it really stands out and it really is the centerpiece of the game. So we're just going to cover all of this over. And then once we're done with that, we're going to go to one of my favourite colours, which is the Dark Rust 302. So this is a really nice dark brown colour. And we're going to use this one just to paint all of the woody areas. So the wood across the top and things like that. There's a few little wooden struts as well just across the front. And we're just going to be as careful as possible not to get this on the green that we've already painted. The good thing about painting this in the original sort of base layers like this is if we do make mistakes, we can always fix them nice and easily. So don't be too overly precious. Let's try to get this on there first and then we can always fix things up as we go trying to be careful just in the corners around the sort of dice entrance uh, so that we don't get this all over the place we're going to try to be as careful as we can and uh, there you go we could just see all of those different little wooden struts just underneath once all of that's done I'm going to use a dipping formula Vallejo game wash so this is just a black wash and I'm going to cover the whole of the model in this color all apart from the inside as you can see the inside of the mouth I'm keeping completely different because as I said I'm going to do something uh, with a completely different technique we're going to do something really really cool as we get to it so that's all I'm doing is straight out of the pot straight onto the miniature you can water this down if you wanted to and you can make this a little bit more uh, manipulate into uh, sort of the cracks and the creases a little bit better if you like. I'm doing this straight out of the pot because I kind of want it to be a little bit darker so that we can build those tones and vibrancy up and I also want the darkness to sit into those really really darker areas so in between sort of the the, uh, the, the sort of ramparts and bits like that and also in between the eyes and the nose and all things like that. I want these areas to be really really dark as we build these colors back up. You know, the cool thing is you don't have to be too precious with this because we're painting scenery and terrain and things like that. We could be pretty messy and that's part of the fun when you're painting these sorts of things. That's why it's such a fun and interesting and entertaining and different kind of painting in this one. So we're not painting everything just the same. We're not doing skin colour and skin tones like we always do. We're doing something completely, completely unique. So yeah, we're just going to cover the whole of the miniature in this. And as you can see, I'm just trying to make sure that I cover all of this um, in a nice even coat. Doesn't matter too much like I say because we're going to build those colors up a little bit later as we go anyway. You'll notice that I'm painting this with a brush and not an airbrush and part of that is going to be down to doing a load of dry brushing. Um, so I'm going to start here by going back to that dark green grey and I'm just going to uh, load up my brush and as you can see I'm using a small bit of kitchen roll just to take all of the excess paint off the brush and then I'm just testing on the back of my hand to make sure that there's enough uh, paint there just so that it will catch on to those raised areas and it'll catch on to those details as you can see now while I'm just dry brushing this along you can see that this is starting now to pick out on those raised areas and all those jagged sort of detailed bits around the face and all things like that all these rocks who start to pick out all of those sharp edges and everything in such a quick and easy fashion 
As I always say with dry brushing, less is more. So with dry brushing, you don't want to try to overload your brush. You want to try to make sure that you use a good bit of kitchen roll to absorb as much of the paint as possible so that as you build this up, you build it up in layers and in stages. You don't want to go too extreme and cover all of the model in your color because that undoes the whole point of using sort of the wash to darken things down and then lighten things up. So you kind of want to use less is more. So less paint on your brush is better because we can always add multiple layers as we go and we can build Build this up in different stages so as you can see I'm just showing you a nice long patch of me dry brushing this first first tone on here this first layer on here and once that's done I'm then just going to use dark green so this is a slight highlight to this uh, dark green gray that we've got and this is going to have a nice little vibrant sort of green tinge to it so what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing as what we've done before we're going to use that uh, little bit of kitchen roll just to catch um, that little bit of paper just to catch as much paint as we can and then we're going to slowly build this tone up and as you can see I'm being a little bit more specific about where I place this now so I want this to catch on all of the raised areas and all of the lighter areas so around the nose the eye sockets across the top we kind of want to simulate where the light is catching on the model so we don't want to paint this too much down in between the recess points and in between those uh, areas between the ramparts and the skull and things like that we kind of want to leave those bits just a little bit darker so that it gives that illusion of of light and contrast and things like that so we're just trying to paint this a little bit more specifically and choosing where we want the highlighting to be and again less is more so you can build this up in stages you can already see the way that green is standing out on the model now from there I'm then going to use anthracite gray so this is a blue tone gray so this is a very very similar sort of color but it does have a slightly blue tone to it and that's all I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to dry brush the base so I'm going to dry brush all of those bottom rocks with this sort of blue color and the idea behind this is it has that similar sort of tinge and that similar sort of quality to it. But having a slight difference in color tone is also going to pull our eyes away on time. So we're not going to be looking at just one big green blob on one big green model. We're going to look at a model that has a couple of different colors to catch your eye. And by using this dry brush in with this less is more style, it's going to do this in a more subtle fashion as well. So it's going to be really, really fantastic. Once that's dry, I'm going to use the anthracite gray and a miskatonic gray from scale 75. I know I'm using some obscure paints in this one. Um, but it was all just because I wanted these paints and I wanted this model to reflect and look as good as it possibly could from the nostalgia side of it looking like I remember it from the old cartoons and also following the box art. I'm using half and half, so just 50, 50 of each, so that's just... Um, equal parts of each of those two paints and then I'm just going to dry brush like we have done just across the bottom parts of the rocks so as you can see just across the bottom area and what we're doing with this is like I say we're having this really cool contrast of this slight cool cold blue sort of color and then we've got this green sort of tone sticking out across the top now once that's done I'm going to use the miskatonic gray on its own this is a very very light gray so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use less again so when I say less is more less is more this is less so I've taken almost all of the paint off the brush for this layer so this is just giving me a very 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 thin and light light layer so this is just giving me a very very small sort of um, highlight boost and a very small highlight tone once that's done, I'm then going to use Arpen Jade or Arpen Jade. And this is, again, just using very, very, very small amounts. And that's all I'm doing is I'm just going to add a few little bits of jade here and there. And that's just to tie in some of those greens. And we're going to get that dark gray color, then the vibrant greens, and then this jade sort of in between as well. Just giving us a few little patches and splodges here and there so that it catches the eye, like I was saying earlier. So you've got the green on top, the blue down the bottom. You've got little bits of jade, little bits of green here and there and it's really going to tie uh, the, the, the castle together. What you could do as well if you wanted to, now I didn't do it with this, I went just for the, the sort of green and blue tone, you could if you wanted to paint a little bit of a uh, sort of purple tone across the top area as well but I opted not to do that. So what we're going to do from there, we're going to use our speed paint so we're going to use zealot yellow, uh, we're going to use fire giant orange and then we're going to use blood red and what we're going to do with these speed paints, we're going 
going to create and simulate this really cool sort of fiery lava effect inside the mouth. And we're going to make this look really simple. Okay, so we're going to make this in such a quick and easy way. First things first, we're going to use the zealot yellow, and we're just going to paint over all of that gray area using that zealot yellow. Now, the cool thing with this is the speed paints are very very thick they will take to the miniature in a really quick and easy fashion the vibrance is there and then you'll get this cool yellow color but you will also get these slight orange tones as well now once I've painted all of the grey, I'm also going to dab quite a bit of this just across the bottom. Again, just simulating that little um, sort of illusion of some of the colour and some of that fire and things just poking out. Once that is sort of drying down but still wet, the idea is then we're going to go in with our fire giant orange and we're just going to use a dabbing and stippling effect, as you can see, with a really sort of rough and broken brush. And the cool thing is, by making sure that these paints are still wet, these will blend together quite nicely. Now, if you wanted to thin them down a little, you can just add a little bit of water, as you can see me doing here, and manipulate and move them around as well. And like I say, they're going to blend together and dry down in a really cool blended fashion. Once you've done that layer, then we're just going to add a small bit of that blood red in there as well. And again, using the same technique, you can see I'm just dabbing some of this red in here, and we're just getting this really cool sort of fire kind of texture on the inside in such a quick and simple easy way now once this dries down these colors are gonna blend and blur together in a really nice simple fashion so it's probably the quickest and easiest way to do sort of like a wet blending kind of effect once that's dry we're then gonna use deep yellow and deep yellow I'm going with a smaller uh, sort of uh, scenery brush so you can see the brush is really sort of uh, split and broken and the reason for that is we're going to use a stippling effect with this brush but because all of the bristles are broken apart it's given us this really random pattern when we use the stippling effect and that's going to create those really really hot light light yellow sort of pockets of um, heat coming off the the fire and the lava and things like that as well and as you can see it's cool because some of the paint is still um, thin so this blends into the color again so we get in this really cool blended tone and blended color in such a quick and easy fashion it looks fantastic I'm also going to do a little bit of this just across the base as well so just across the bottom part as you can see and again those paints are already wet so they blend in and that yellow is blending into the orange and creating this vibrance and this boost just like so it's giving off a really really cool effect and the cool thing is like i say it's so so simple to do this isn't something that you need to perfect over years and years and years and years something that you can do really really quickly and really easily as i've shown you with just three speed paints and a single yellow and look at this sort of fiery lava effect that we've got sticking out here now it looks absolutely fantastic now once that's done we're going to go to orange fire from uh, vallejo and that's all I'm going to do with this one now is I'm going to use my dry brush. And again, less is more, so very, very lightly. I'm going to use this dry brush to just dry brush all around the outside of the mouth and the stone wall just across the base as well. And the reason for this is, as you can see, we've got all this flame and fire inside. We've got all this heat inside, but all of our rocks outside don't mimic that. They are all cool and cold. So by dry brushing some of this color and some of this tone back in, what you're creating is this illusion that the heat is showing through and that the heat is just pushing through and catching on some of those rocks now if you do add a little bit too much you can just use your thumb or your finger to just spread it about a bit as i have done there and you can see now look at all this heat yeah, it's starting to look like we've got a lot of warmth coming out of the mouth and you can really see that it's starting to create this sort of OSL, this really quick and easy sort of way of making this um, sort of light source. Now once the orange is dry, I'm going to do the same thing with deep yellow. So this is the colour that we used to do all of that stippling effect for the really warm bits inside of the mouth. And again, I'm just going to go around the very edges and just build up this, this heat source and create this really nice, light, warm tone just like so and again the less is more that still works right here you know less is more the less on your brush the more you can sort of slowly build this up and control where this color and where this tone is going 
There we go. Now as an optional layer, if you like, I'm also going to use one of the pastel tones. So I'm using pastel yellow from the AK Interactive because this is a very, very bright, bright yellow. It has a really, really cool property. It looks fantastic on models and it's a really good light, light highlight. If you don't have this color, then you can always just mix the yellow that I've showed you before with something like an AK Ivory or a Bone White just to create that really nice, vivid, vibrant sort of white yellow, this white hot yellow. And there we go. So that's the dry brushing bit done. What we're going to do is we're going to use the deep yellow that we used from Vallejo earlier. And this time we're going to mix this with a little bit of water. And we're going to control this with our size zero brush. And we're just going to paint this into some of the little cracks and some of the little um, stonework uh, parts just coming out of the window. And the reason we're doing this is in the box set, there seems to be this really cool sort of lava effect or fire effect coming out of the window. So I wanted to try to simulate this um, as close to the box art as I could for my friend just by adding a few little tiny little details like this it really does set off the miniature and really does sort of create the the finished sort of effect of the model it makes the model look really really interesting and really really different so as you can see I'm not being overly careful because again yellow is quite a thin color it will dry down quite nicely but also it will simulate the heat on the rocks if there's a little bit on the rocks and things like that so you don't have to be massively massively uh, perfect with this it's all about just making this effect of sort of lava dripping out of the window and you can see how quickly and easily I'm doing this and again once that's done we're going to use the fire orange again so the same color as we used uh, for doing the dry brushing around the mouth and this time I'm just placing this in a few of the cracks just like so this one I've watered down quite a lot so that this will just fall simply into those cracked areas and cover over a little bit of the yellow just giving us that really nice tone from there then I'm gonna use Kokum Copper. Again, if you don't have this color, you can use any other color that you would prefer to use with wood. And that's all I'm gonna do is quickly dry brush this copper color across the wood areas and the slats across the top, just giving us this illusion of wood and really nice sort of wood tones. If you don't have the Kokum Copper, then I would normally probably use something like a flat earth from Vallejo. I think that would do a fantastic job as well. And I'm not just painting across the top, it's also gonna be dry brushed just across a few of the slats here here on the side as well. When dry brushing these bits, it's worth taking your time and being careful not to get the brown colors on top of all of the green and the stonework that we've worked so hard for. Now for one of the final stages, I'm gonna use Mod Podge and I'm also gonna use my Hobby Round uh, Meadow Blend. So this is from um, this is from Gale Force 9. They do these little hobby rounds and they have a really great meadow blend, which gives, uh, it's almost like a moss. It's, when it comes out of the, uh, the, the box, uh, out of the tub, it's quite spongy. So it absorbs your glue quite well and it sticks to bases and things like that in such a fantastic way. So as an added optional extra, what I'm doing for this one is I'm adding these mossy effects because I kind of want this to look a little bit more alive than just rocks. So that's all I'm doing is I'm just adding my matte Mod Podge here and then just gently placing these uh, little bits of sponge sort of moss just in the cracks and then you can go as wild as you like or as reserved as you like with these. You don't have to place these on at all. You know, this is purely optional. Um, or you can go nuts and cover as much of it as you like. It's completely up to you. It's however you feel comfortable. Like I always say, they're your miniatures. You can paint them however you like. So for me, I'm just adding and dabbing all of these little bits in. The cool thing with the Mod Podge is it is a matte effect. So when it dries down, it will dry down to a matte, a nice solid matte tone as well. And I've just shaken off the excess there. And all in all, that is it. That's all we've done is a ton of dry brushing, a really cool sort of lava fire effect inside of the mouth, and a little bit of uh, flock just up and around the mossy areas of the dice tower. And it looks superb, it looks really, really cool. I love the tones, I love how the jade has come out, I love sort of all of the details and how quickly we were able to get the heat coming out of the mouth, you know, how cool does that look? Um, so yeah, you'll have to let me know in the comment section below what you thought of this one, whether you thought uh, whether you would tackle it in the same way or whether you would prefer to do an airbrush or all of these different things. You know, I'm open to suggestions. I love talking to you guys. I love hearing from you. So let me know what you think of this one and let me know what your favorite part of this one was as well. And if there's anything specific that stands out for you in this build and in this paint. Um, I'd also like to know um, sort of how 
you would tackle this one when you're going to do this one yourselves because I know one or two of you guys in the comments said to me previously that you've also got this model and you wanted to see how to do it. Um, so I'd be really curious uh, to know whether or not this is kind of how you saw this one turning out. So yeah, as always, my friends, thank you so much for everything you do, for tuning in, commenting, and sharing, liking, absolutely everything. It absolutely does benefit my channel. Um, and I, I honestly cannot thank you all enough. I really do appreciate all of your time, your effort and everything. Please, my friends, take care of yourselves out there and I will see you guys on the next one.